Check one, two, microphone. We would be check. If you would join us. They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America oh, F1. Is that working? Uh oh, did the battery wear out? All right. Welcome to another episode of America F1, where today we're going to review the Imola Grand Prix. Yes, I'd like to make an announcement. Sherman Tillman does not know how to press a button on a phone. This is our second version of this today. Loser. What are we talking about? I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> I did press the button. And then he blamed me for it, which was the best part. I know you must have went behind me and touched the button. Yeah, it was my fault. I, I did it with my mind. That that Jedi war. Oh, the Jedi, yeah. <laughs> ah! yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think you did. Okay. Not that that's a thing. It's a, mo- a really bad movie from the 1970s. At any point in time in those last 12 laps, did you think that Lando Norris was going to catch Max Verstappen? No. No, I didn't think he was going to pass him either. He needed a rocket up his ass to do something like that. I, not only I didn't think he was going to catch him, I knew he wasn't going to pass him. But on television, they made it seem like, I mean, because that was the most exciting thing that happened all race. So they're like, oh, he's catching him. If there's a couple more, oh my God, will he catch him? He's, oh, he's coming. He's coming. <laughs> Nothing. What do they call these idiots who talk on TV? Nothing. Pundits? Yeah, pundits. Jesus Christ. That was the worst race of the year so far. Because they said before the race that uh, uh, Lando and the Ferraris were faster than the Red Bull. And then, whoa, in, in qualifying, who was faster? Well, Max, Max, even And then Max tenth. led every, every lap, right? Well, except when he pitted. Okay, when he so pitted. He, he led every lap of the race. He, he was never challenged. No, I don't think he was challenged. I think the closest, at the end... Norris did get pretty close. He was like three he, or four seconds behind. Oh, at the two? end, he was uh, he was within DRS. Yeah, like I, within, think, I think I think Verstappen. One and one I think Verstappen turned down the ga- the 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 engine and just cruised home. And they told him just keep it on the track because you've already got a black and white flag, and we can't get a five second penalty because w. he's under five. Just keep it on track. And I never thought Does he already got fifty something victories. Oh, it's crazy, dude. Jesus Christ. It's crazy. If he keeps this up, he could win 150 races. I thought... I, well, I know. No, it's only because of the domination of the engine right now. I think I think it's going to change next year, and I think in the, re- the regulation change. I don't, you don't know that. Yeah, well, I mean, I, like, everyone's leaving Red Bull. I mean, everybody's going That's not true. The whole, most of their aerodynamic team is still going to be there. I, I think that that's the only reason he's entertaining Mercedes offer. Do you even think he's entertaining it? I no, know. They're all, they're, Ferrari supposedly offered him twenty five million a year to go make race cars in, in red. He's going to go to he's going to go to Ferrari. No, I was ta- not not Agent Newey. I was talking about Max Verstappen. You'd think because remember that Mercedes offered him a hundred million or a hundred and fifty million dollars. I don't know how many years that was for either, though. That could have been for three years. But my question is, do you think he would? ever go to Mercedes-Benz. Of course. Yeah? Yeah. Mercedes-Benz just got their car wrong in the last three years. It's still a, ma- it's still a major team. They just, I don't know what they did wrong. Well, let's hop right into our 10-1. to 1. In 10th place, Yuki Sonoda qualified in 7th. Sherman's favorite driver is not he's very not my good. Fa- he's my third. I think I got him third. Well, you, so, you like his haircut. Hamilton's first, then Leclerc, and then, yeah, Yuki's my third guy. Yep. Right now, Verstappen uh, is the best driver. Verstappen? Who's Verstappen? Verstappen? Verstappen is his actual Verstappen? name. Verstappen. So don't call him stupid, then. He's not stupid. I like that. My, my brother came up yeah, with that. Yeah, but it's not good. That's not good television. Anyways, well, who is at number nine? Yuki had a good race. Uh, he qualified seventh. He qualified ahead of both Mercedes Benz. He, he was ahead of uh, George, and he was ahead of. Oh, you know, no, he wasn't. 
I think George qualified six and Hamilton qualified eight. So he'd split them. Which, when you think about all the supposed upgrades that Mercedes brought, you know, because they brought a boatload of upgrades, Yuki was faster still. I don't care if he's faster than Daniel. It's not going to mean anything. I don't think I, he was I, faster than Hamilton and 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 in qualifying. Oh, in qualifying, yeah, he oh. he qualified seventh and Ham qualified eighth. Yeah, but remember, uh, Daniel uh, finished fourth in the sprint race at, at Miami. So every once in a while, that car has some pace in it. I don't know why it doesn't have pace in it all the time because it's basically last year's Red Bull. I mean, in I mean, ninth place. Lance Stroll, probably, to me, having his best race of the season. He qualified 13th. He picked up four spots. He was the lead Aston Martin this weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, even a blind pig finds a truffle once in a while. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) Just keep digging. Just keep digging. (laughs) You'll find it. (laughs) No, Lance, I think they brought a bunch of updates, but you know how sometimes you can bring updates to a car and... It's just a gremlin in the in the update, and that's like that's he what drives, I think. He, he gets lucky every once in a while because his daddy bought him a Formula One team, so you know, and he acts like a five year old all the time. So, when, like when you look at how Fernando, because Fernando had his one off race that he usually has every year, uh-huh. where he's horrible and qualifying, and you know he's back at the back of the pack at in race pace, and you know they ended up he he went off into the gravel a couple times, you know, and I. I like the gravel. I like gravel better than runoff. What do you think, Mike? Oh, yeah. It should be on every track. There should be a moat, too. That would be cool. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, anything. And a plank. You shall walk the plank. Because if you go (laughs) off the track, if you screw up a corner on most of these tracks now, nothing happens. Right. You don't hurt your car. You don't hurt really your lap time much. You go into that gravel. I mean, Checo did that during the end of the race, and he lost five seconds. So yeah, quite a few people went off into the gravel. Well, because it's a da- it's a very tricky downhill. You're going downhill into this corner, and if you and these guys are so on the edge, you have no idea how close they are. To the, and then just and he locked it up just a little bit, and that's that's all it took. Because they're going so freaking fast, it doesn't look like how f- fast they're going on on TV is not how fast they're going. Oh, yeah, when you go in person, it's it's, so, it's yeah. a blur. It's like, what wow, the hell? Wow, wow. Like, yeah, they, they, they're they moving. And it's when you go in person, because you've never been in person. I've been to IndyCar races. Well, IndyCar's not the same. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. It's got no, a wing no, on no, it. Nowhere it's crazy near as fast. fast. But no, you, actually, the IndyCars are faster. What are you talking about? No, they're not. At, at, in, on a, in an oval, they're yeah, faster. thank you. But this is not an oval. And the prosecution rests. So, anyhow... When you go in person, it's very impressive how fast they're going. And to be able to control the car going that speed. And that's why they always say that the Formula One drivers are the greatest drivers in the world. I would say the top ones are, but not probably the bottom half. Like I Not don't, Lance Stroll. Like Lance sure. Stroll and Kevin Magnussen and, you know... Uh, Zhao and, and 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 Logan Sargent, you know, they're not included in that. Logan Sargent <laughs> is not, not a, is not a Formula One <laughs> driver. The best drivers in the world. <laughs> Dang, he he pissed. He's, I'm still mad about him. Last year, he popped off that one race where he like showed up and it was like, oh, he's figuring this thing out. No. And no. <laughs> he's not figuring out anything. He, I'm surprised he's still in the car. To be honest, oh. I'm surprised they haven't made an announcement that he's out. Oh, they've already, they've already said he's going to be out at the M- Emily. They might oh. as well just bring Liam Lawson. Into well, that's the car. who they're going to put in the car. They might as well do it right now. There's and he's going to be in the Red Bull, the RB next year. The anyways. only thing I think why they're taking so long is because I bet you Liam Lawson doesn't bring the money that Le- that Logan Sargent does, and they need the money at Williams still. Oh, <laughs> Williams definitely need the money. They don't have a who are the sponsors on that car except for Duracell. And how much? Yeah, exactly. And how much would, Name two sponsors. And how how much money is Duracell bringing to just be on the on the hoop? Yeah, that's when you, you know what. That's a good point. Who is? I can. I can name sponsors for every team, but for them, I just know Duracell. Huh? Huh? Yeah. In eighth place, Checo Sergio Perez, who qualified in eleventh 
And this is one of those races. He had good form in the beginning of the year. This is one of those races where he's so far off Max. I mean, he only made it out of... He he didn't make it into Q3. It's not a Checo track, though. It's, it's not. not. No. It's not. It's But I almost thought it would be because it's like Monaco, but without walls. Well, next week, Checo will be better because he'll be at Monaco. And did he win? He won last year, right? Checo has won Monaco. Did, was it last year? Though? I thought Max won Monaco. It could be Checo. Anyways, Sherman's going to put it up there who won the race. I don't think it's important right now. In seventh place, one point, the guy who seems to complain every Sherman race. Why does everyone hate Russell so much? You know what? I don't hate any Formula One driver. I dislike George Russell because I think he's arrogant. I think he's smug. I think he overestimates his talent where it seems to me all he cares about is beating Lewis Hamilton. He doesn't care about anything else. That's all he cares about. If he finished 12th and Hamilton finished 13th, job well done. That's all he would care about. He doesn't play the team game. It doesn't seem like he's a team player. And when he cooked his tires and Hamilton would have caught him, and they were saving George from being embarrassed by not only having Hamilton pass him, but having Checo pass him. They brought him in to change tires. Then he could still get the one point. He could still get the fastest lap. And he's only going to be one point behind Hamilton because he will finish seventh and Hamilton will finish sixth. But still he goes on the radio going, whoa, even though Hamilton's 23 seconds ahead of him. Oh, are we, is he going to stop and swap back the position? And they're like, <laughs> "No, George, he's, no, we're not doing that, dude. That's his job. What you just, what you just said is his job." He's always whining. God, they just hate he's everyone. Hates that guy. Well, whining. someone's got to wear the black hat, and he doesn't even wear a black hat. If he, if he was like, ah, he wasn't smiling all the time, and you saw him, and he was like, ah, I'm never swap back. And they're like, well, it's up to you. And he, he could have came on and said, no, I'm staying. Let's keep going. He could have said that. Nope. <laughs> In sixth place, Lewis Hamilton, who had a good race. He qualified eighth. And he was looking. No, he didn't have a good race. He was 33 seconds off the pace. Nowhere I said he had a good race because in race pace that he was having the same times as the race leaders. No, that Mercedes is the it's the is, but is a the midfield race, car. It is. It is. It is. It is a midfield car. Because all the other cars have won races. The Ferrari and the Ferraris won a race. The McLarens won a race. Yeah. And the Austin the Aston Martin is I think better even better than the Ferrari. I mean the, that no the Aston no, no, Martin is not no, bigger it, than the it's Mer- better than the Mercedes. It was before. These last two races. Eh, they're, they're, no, no, no. I don't know what, no. what's up with their updates for that car. It was, but. It was a, before these last two races, I thought Mercedes had the fifth best car. But after these last two, they moved up into the fourth best. I think Aston Martin has taken a step back with their upgrades. Yeah, they'll work it out. Yeah, they will, but... This is the same crap they did last year. They were really good at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Then they sort of fell off because they were... They, so, something's not right with their, their whatever their simulations. That that's what they said last year. It seems like they're having the same problem. Um, let's see what they're, if they're, if they're any good next week. I mean, you never know. Carlos Sainz finished in fifth, qualified in fifth. It was a pretty ho hum race by him. I mean, there was never any time where I thought he was going to get on the podium. And these last two races, it seems like Charles Leclerc is kind of. Not only out qualifying him, but in the race, in race pace, he's, I mean, at one time, I think he was a, a second a lap faster than Carlos. Anyways, who's next? Oscar Piastri. He qualified second, but he got a three grid penalty because he blocked Kevin Magnuson, who everybody seems <laughs> like every race, every practice. Everyone's blocking <laughs> Kevin Magnuson. Like, well, he's he's him. he's been known to <laughs> to be a human roadblock during <laughs> and practice and qualifying. Everyone's always in his way. Yeah, you know, and when he was in um, 
in Miami, Lewis never complained about him driving like that. No, because Lewis, Lewis likes driving like that because he's like, well, you know, it's yeah, fun. He's not doing anything. He's yeah, in the mid-pack. He's so. in the mid-pack. He's like, yeah, I had something to do. It's fun. But, uh, you know. I, I thought a couple of the times Magnuson just dive-bombed uh, Lewis. Yeah. And dive-bombing is... is like a retaliation for something. It's not like it's not how you're supposed to do it. Well, you know, the one thing that I've heard a lot of pundits talk about, but not only them saying that, I said it and you've said it. You got to punish uh somebody if they got 10 second penalty. But he and, drove off the track so many times, that's what he got the really they got the penalties for. Well, he got a lot of penalties, but the thing is is if there has to be like a, a drive through penalty or something like that. Because if you get a 10-second penalty and you already know you got a 10-second penalty, now you go off the track, now you cut the chicane, now you're doing all these things to keep the other drivers behind you so your sister, your driver, can go ahead and get more of a gap. I don't think that's sportsmanship. I think that should be penalized even more because you're doing that and nothing really can be done to you because you already got 10 seconds and, you know, in Kevin's place, a 10 second and a 20 second. And it doesn't really matter to him, but it makes a big difference for his teammate who's, you know, gapping, getting a bigger gap. So I think in those instances, the second penalty should be a drive through. Oh, I don't know. There, the rules, all these stupid rules, and the, they have the race director and all these. It's, there should be one guy. There should be a rule book. This is the rules. The end. But anyways, um, I don't. I don't mind them having stewards. I just think the stewards should be the same people. I don't think it should be a roulette. Stuart Roulette. Like, you come, hey, Mike, you used to race. Hey, why don't you come and, oh, I heard you're going to be in uh, Italy. Why don't you come and uh, officiate this race this weekend? And you're going to pay me $100,000 yeah, to do this? I think oh, it, I'm in. <laughs> no, nah, I think it should be the same people. Well, no, there should just be long. one person. That's the one thing I like about NASCAR. Now, sometimes they get it wrong, too, but usually when they get it wrong, they'll get it right later. Mm. They don't, because they, they're a dictatorship. And liberty should be a dictatorship. They, there should be one person, the boss. That person makes, like Michael Messi, what he did a couple years ago. Yeah, I think, I think liberty should take more charge and break away from the FIA anyway. They can't do that. Why? Why? I, I've always wondered, why can't they? All these other sports are self-governing. Because they're the governing body. Except for soccer. Like, like in football, NFL's NFL. You know, baseball, baseball's baseball. Basketball, basketball is basketball. There's no other organization governing them. But in Europe, they have that. They have what Formula One, they have what driving, they have what soccer, they have another organization. And I, I think that leads to corruption. Oh. All these places are it's like Sherman, it's like saying that you you're going and you're gonna you're gonna go drive a race car, you're gonna go have a race team and you're gonna do everything by the rule book. You'll never win one race. You'll never. Your car will suck every year. Mm-hmm. You, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Ain't cheating, ain't trying, ain't cheating, ain't trying. That that Red Bull is yeah. cheating. And don't tell yeah. me that the Mercedes team didn't cheat all those years. How come they had the best engine by a lot? Speaking by, of cheating, uh oh, here we go. I would build a great wall, and nobody oh, knows what we're dancing now. Oh yeah, and I'll build them very inexpensive. In. Second place, or is it Piastri? No, we talk about. Did we we talked about Oscar yet? I don't know. No, I don't we? think we talked about Oscar. All Oscar right. finished in fourth. He qualified second. Yeah, we were talking about him because he got the blocking penalty All with right. Kevin Magnussen. So in third place was Charles Leclerc, who qualified fourth. He had, you know, I mean, I never thought he was going to win the race. I never thought he was going to lose third place. I never thought he was going to catch Lando. He was just in that. I'm in third, and he stayed in third the whole race. And for these last two races, he looks a lot better than Carlos Sainz. Yeah, but uh, you never know. We don't know what's we don't know what the engine package is. This is the time of the year they're. But gonna... he looks better than Carlos Sainz. All right. Well, then he looks better than. Carlos. You don't think so? I I I didn't really pay attention to who came in third. Was... In second place, Lando Calrissian. Wookie Chewbacca Norris. Who the hell is Carissian? <laughs> he qualified, <laughs> qualified third, got to move up because of Oscar's penalty, 
And, you know, they made it seem like he was going to, if it was a couple more laps, he would have caught Max for stepping, which I was sitting there going, man, this guy ain't catching Max. What are they, what are they talking? What are they smoking? They got to just keep people with a watch. Well, he was, ca- he was know, catching them. He was them. catching them. I don't think he was catching them like, like he was going to get to pass them because I think for stupid was just doing his thing. He was doing his race craft and just chug a lug until the end like you're supposed to. Um, I never thought I, I never thought he was ever in any danger. But considering that you know Lando got his first win last week and then now he's in second, he might win Monaco. I mean, he's his 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 confidence has to be at the top of the heap right now. He's driving really well. He's qualifying really well. I think he. My prediction: Lando Norris. For what? Winning Monaco. I don't know if that car is going to be... It's a Monaco car. It might be. I think... Well, Ferrari's car will probably be better at Monaco. Uh, I, we don't know that either. I don't know which one of these cars has... Because the, they're going to all come with with different wings, different front wings, different rear wings, whoever has the highest downforce, which I don't think it's the, the Red Bull, but you never know. Adrian Newey might have, you know... They, they might show up and, and just... Their car will be the best, but I don't know. Monaco is that one-off race that basically ten guys can win that race. And everybody complains on the internet about Monaco, especially the DTS fans. Like, oh, it's such a boring race. They don't understand. Monaco's not a race. It's, it's an a event. spectacle. Yeah, you know, you go there for the glitz and glamour. Because I've been there, and it's so. <laughs> picturesque when you're sitting in the stance and you have and it's water smarter than you think it is right? and then you have the all the yachts and all the stars and all the cars that you see like when you're walking around monaco and you can go from monaco to nice you can go from monaco to Cannes, you can go from monaco over to italy it's in the parties and 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 the the models and it's just it's it's an event and it's an event that i think every formula one Fan eventually needs to get to, it's, and, it's, and it's the race that all the drivers want to win. Well, yeah, but it's like it's really the uh, the race of the year that all the business is done. Mm. Um, all the driver lineup will usually be done by the end of Monaco. Um, that we, won't, we might not find out about it for a couple months, but all the all these people are going to all these other teams this year. We we know we're. Um, Lewis is going. We know where um, Hulkenberg's going. We have a very good idea. Carlos is going to Audi. Um, the only thing right now that uh, the, the big seat that's open is the Mercedes. And I keep saying I think Vettel's going to be in that seat. Um, I don't think so. In first place, Super Max Verstappen. Verstappen. Qualified, qualified first. Won the race. That is his led every lap. Eighth pole position in a row, which ties him with one Ayrton Senna. I Ayrton Senna, who's also the other person to win or to have eight pole positions in a row. To what else can you say about this guy? I mean, he just got the got the best car. I he mean. has the best car, but considering that Checo qualified eleventh. And Max had to that that lap he did he had to bring something to it because he only he only qualified by a tenth ahead of uh, Oscar Piastri. Was he ahead of Piastri? Or what, not, it wasn't Lando. No, well, because remember, because of the penalty, so Piastri actually qualified second. Oh. It was only a tenth ahead of him. I I was watching on my phone, and when I saw Max at the top of the thing, I think I turned it off, and I didn't really pay any attention to who came in second. I mean, Max, I mean, God, the guy is, I mean, he's already won over 50 races. It's amazing. Yeah, but anyways, he, he, we got to see where he's going to land, Is because he, he's going to do Red Bull next year. He's got a contract. Yeah, he has to. Well, contracts don't mean anything. But I think he definitely has to stay. As long as Helmut Marco stays. Hey, what's, he gonna, not, what's he going to go to Mercedes next year and be in a hoopty car? I don't think so. Yeah, I can't see that happening. Because no. I, I saw the new 2026 cars and they're smaller. 
But not by that much, though. Yeah, but they're smaller and they're not going to have the stupid uh, ground effects nonsense. Well, they should go back to the V8s. Anyway. The what? V8s or V10s or V12s. Oh, they're never going back they to those. They should. It's going to be an all they electric should. series by no, 2030. It's not. It's this not. is going to be the last it's combustion not. engine. It's not. <laughs> sure, sure, Sherman doesn't realize what's going on around nope, around the not, world. Not every country now, I think, no. has more EV cars than no. they do combustion engines. No, they don't. No, they don't. EV is not the way to go. They're going to go hydrogen. They they know that the EV cars are worse for the environment than regular combustion engines. How's that? Because the minerals that they need to mine these uh, batteries. Well, they got new batteries coming out. No, this this is just don't. a stopgap. They don't. Yes, the, they do. The batteries that they, the cobalt, cobalt, and all of the lithium and all the things that they need for these batteries are worse for the environment to mine them than a regular combustion car. So all right, well, that is why they're going to get rid of that. And plus, none of these grids can handle all electric anyway. Look, I mean, look at that. I was just going to, I picked up my daughter from L.A. over the weekend and I do my one stop at Harris Ranch, you know, from bath and break. Yeah, and get a little food. And there's all these people in their EVs. First of all, all the EVs are, are taken up. Each each charging station is taken up. People are waiting. Who wants to do that, man? They don't have the they don't have the infrastructure for this stuff. They they, they put the the egg out before they hatch the damn uh, chickadee. You um. know. And let's talk about Doobie Energy. Yes, because Doobie Energy gives you more energy. It's more focus and it's more fun. Buy your Doobie today. Use the code America F1 M E R I C A. That's M E R I C A F1 to get your discount on Doobie Energy Drink. How much are we getting paid for this? When people buy it, we get a percentage. But they gotta mean, buy it, damn it! What do you mean a percentage? What percentage? They, they have like this look account. Do you have a contract with these people? Yeah, well, they people gotta buy it first. When you buy some, I, I don't want. It, it, there's no weed used to in work it. out. What is it? It's like energy drink. I mean, it's all sugar based. No, it's not. Su- there's no sugar in it. Oh, uh-huh. so then that's why you should get some. Get you a doobie pack. <laughs> Where is my doobie? They didn't give us any. Senna. It's 30 years of the anniversary of Senna's death. He passed away at Imola in, what would you say, Williams, yeah? Mm-hmm. And he, he didn't even make it a year in that team yet. Right? No, it was like four or five races in or something like that. Now, the one interesting thing I learned about him, and I, I knew a lot of stuff about him, but I, I didn't know he drove for Tolman. But he left Holman and didn't tell anybody. He had signed a contract with Lotus, you know, the John Player special car, and never said anything. So when they found out, they were so incensed that they banned him for a race. I still don't know why they did that. It's Formula One. You're gonna, you're, your career is so short. And back then, people got hurt and died. So um, I don't remember that happening. It kind of was vaguely maybe that did happen. But... Um, yeah, he was. Tolman wasn't the team to be on. I mean, he went to, to. Um, I was so surprised that Tolman had some. I mean, they had some of the biggest guys in Formula One. Yeah, I didn't Simmons know. was there. I yeah. think Ross Brown was there. Yeah. But if Sher- Sherman's going to put up in the thing, there's other people that were there. I think Rory Byrne designed that car. I mean, I was surprised that they. I mean, they were. I th- from what I remember, and I could be wrong, but I don't think I am, but I could be, they were a GP2 team, and... When it was called F2. It used to be called F2, then yeah. they made it something else. And, and then, then they took that team and brought it up to Formula 1. Well, a lot of teams did that back in the day. Yeah, so I didn't know that. And so he was really punching way above his weight in that Tolman, getting it second in oh, Monaco. Oh, no, he was... He was he was pretty racy in that car, but I don't think they had the engine that could. But anyways, he went to he went to Lotus. He was pretty good there for three years, and then he went to McLaren, where he was world champion a bunch of times. And then he uh, went to Williams in '94, which turned out to be a horrible decision because he ended up dying. Why didn't he stay at McLaren, by the way? Anyway. Because the electronics in that '93 season, the active, the traction control, the uh, the car was on. So it would balance the car into the corner. They were so fast. And the McLaren wasn't as good as the Williams. The Williams had the best electronic package. 
So he fought like hell to get to that team. Um, and the only reason he got to go there was because Alon Prost retired in 90, after the 93 season. Now, I thought Alan Prost, did, Alan Prost, he didn't go to Ferrari? He was at Ferrari, but he got sacked. He kept complaining about the car. Really? Yeah. I didn't know he after he fired. after he left McLaren because he wouldn't work with uh he wouldn't he didn't want to work with Senna anymore after the eighty nine season right. yeah he went to the uh, William he went to the Ferrari and he was there for a year and a half then he quit and he got fired I think he was out for a year and then he came back I think it was the ninety huh. yeah the ninety two season he came back he and won fired. the championship then no no it was the ninety three season he came back won the championship and then retired. And then Senna got that ride, and then by the time Senna got the car, it wasn't what it was. So, Roland, Roland, Roland Roethlisberger also passed away uh, the same weekend at that Ayrton Senna passed away. I Ayrton Senna. Ayrton. Did I say? I thought I said it it's right. I Ayrton Senna. What did I say? Ayrton Senna. Did I say that? That's what, exactly what you said. Why do you have such a hard time with pronunciation? Anyways, uh, yeah, Roland passed away in, I believe, qualifying. Um, really nasty-looking accident. Um, and then Rubens Barrichello almost died in that in that same weekend where he just decided to drive his car up into the air into a fence for some reason. Did anybody get hurt in the, uh, the audience on that? No, no. It, was, it went right into the catch fence. I don't even think there was uh, stands there, but... Yeah, he, he had an interview. There's a famous interview with him standing there. He's got two black eyes. He has no memory of this event because he got a concussion. So, Huh. What rumors are you hearing about in the paddock right now? Um, the stake F1, the Audi team. Mm-hmm. Looks like uh, Botas and Jean are out. Yeah. Um, Hulkenberg's already been confirmed. Right. Science is just a matter of time unless he goes to Mercedes. Um, I think if I was... Carlos, the reason why I would go to Audi is because one, they offered you a boatload of money. Two, they offered him a, a ride and a good team. So two, I don't know they're going to come out the gate winning or like you know vying for podiums, but maybe in two, two or three years they would be because they're going to put money into the. Well, they might. They might be good. In, they the might car. be good in twenty twenty six. They might be good next year. You don't know that. That's the thing about when they, when they do these rules changes. That's why I wish they did this every two years. They would have a major. But that would cost too much money, wouldn't no, it? No, it wouldn't. But uh, yeah, that, that's the one thing. About, and in the late in the late two thousands, those cars by the ninety the two thousand and eight season, mm-hmm. one of the mechanics from Ferrari said, "If you if you because all the cars were all copycatted by that time, and the rules didn't really change all that much." And he said, "If you painted our cars black, we wouldn't know which one was which." That's how clo- that's how much they looked alike. Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't see Zhao being in a seat next year. I don't. I know Sergeant's not going. Sergeant won't make. He won't make. He's it not going to be. Year. He might not be in the next yeah, race. He so. won't. He won't make it out of this year. But I don't. When I think about Zhao and his, I can't recall one race where I was like. Oh, that guy's looking racy. He's pretty good. He might have found something here. I can't wa- remember he's one like, qualifying he's, he's and a, one race. He's I. Right. I mean, I, I, you know, no one's. I, I don't. There's no rumors about where he's going. So, yeah, I, I mean, he could end up in the Haas. That's about the because Berman's already been confirmed, and there's a really good chance uh, Magnuson's done. Yeah, I think Magnuson's done. Um, no, Magnuson's done. And the Williams team, we we already know Albon's in the car next year for the next two years, and that they're probably going to sign Botas for two years because James Viles, who's the principal for that team, wants to have a, a, a stable driver lineup for the transition into the next car. Yeah, and if Yuki doesn't go to Red Bull, he's not going to. He's going to. He's going to be in the RB next year. I, I unless, unless, if if if. Fernando retires. There's rumors of him going to Aston Martin because that's going to be the Honda team. It's they're gonna. It's gonna be. It's not going to be the Honda uh, Aston Martin team. I, I don't see that happening. I see Yuki going to Aston Martin. I see Fernando 
maybe he's going to retire. He's going to retire. Probably. I, I mean, I, I'd well, be, you say this year or next year. I'm talking about uh, 2026. Yeah, so he'll he'll be gone by then, and he has a lifetime gig with him now. So mm-hmm. he'll be like, uh, he'll he'll be like, because um, they're not gonna they're not gonna. I mean, <laughs> unless the he'll be, uh, the, he'll be like the, Nikki. Uh, he he's that's gonna be his role. He's gonna be like Nikki Lauda. Uh, I don't he's, think so because he's he's just so for himself. He's like he's not a team anything. He's all about himself. What are you you don't think about? he's gonna be a guy who's gonna no, like, try to help drivers. He's just been he's just been he's just been uh being nice to Lance Stroll because his daddy owns the team and he knows his daddy's putting money into the team. So but I don't I think next year will be Fernando's last year cuz he's going to be 44, 45. Yeah. yeah, he can't drive forever. He can't drive forever. But um no, that's the one of the rumors, but who knows? But the Aston Martin team, their last year's Aston Martin will be next year cuz they're going to be the Honda team in 2026. Well, there's two. I'm happy that Hulkenberg has one of these seats. But I really still believe that Yuki deserves a better... He, he deserves an upgrade. He's not that good. I mean, he's proven himself. No, he has, and he's not that good. He's scoring points, man. Oh, yeah. That, that, Sherman, there's, points. There's, there's, there's rumors all over all over the internet that he's going to the Mercedes seat. Well, he's not going to the Mercedes seat. That's that, exactly. Then uh, the prosecution rests. Not going there. But anyways... But I also think it's kind of strange that you don't hear his name... More because well, he's not very good. He is. If you watch him drive, he's on the, good. No, he's not. He's I. He's good. <laughs> no, he's not. Put some respect. Sherman just likes name. his haircut. That's what it's coming. I like to. Yuki. I think he's. I think he's a good qualifier. I think he's good in the race. I, I mm-hmm. like his. I like him talking on the radio. I, I like his character. I like. Uh, he has a personality. I if like he, Yuki. If I he, like Yuki. If he could drive a little better, then he can he, drive. Okay. What's the What's the last thing? That That's it. We got We got Monaco and our Monaco prediction. Since we're not doing a Monaco prediction show, because there's no way to predict what's going to happen. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, it's just not much of a. It's, it, it would be like, um, who do you think is going to win? Well, haven't been to Monaco. For the people oh, who God. are going, it's going to be great. It's such a fabulous spectacle what i love about it is you go by the casino every night and you can car watch and people did you ever watch. go into the casino yeah i did I, I did. did you spend any money no no not at all just <laughs> i'm in. not a gambler no. i'm like no thanks. i'm not a gamble but i just don't yeah I didn't. no i thought but, you had to pay to get into the no casino. we had we had a we do have to pay but we have a guide a guy we had a, a connection that we got to go into the opera when it wasn't open and got a a view around the opera, which was yeah. cool, and then we got to go check out the casino, and then we got to go to some other spots that normal people don't get to go to. It was uh, hosted by uh, a friend of mine's. It was his dad, and his brother was the one, or his, or his uncle was the one, kind of showing us around out there, and you know, we had a good time. There's a uh, there's nothing like be- sitting there and you, you get the cars going on the track or well, it's the street mm-hmm. and you have the water in the background and you have all the yachts and then you have the, the Did you get to go on a yacht? No, we, we, we had good seats. <laughs> but it was just, it's just the ambiance. It's I mean, not going to be a good race. But... No, but you're right by Nice. You can go to Cannes. Yeah. You can go to Italy. It's sunny. There's stars. There's great cars all over the place. Oh, I bet. Like when you're just walking around the street, you're seeing cars you've never seen. You've seen well, you, Ferrari models that you're like, damn. You, you have to be, you have to like, to live in Monaco, I think you have to be a millionaire now. You have to have a net worth of a million dollars, yes. That's crazy. Which is good because there's no taxes. It has good climate. But, you know, you're living in How a How do they have no taxes and their roads still look like they're amazing? Well, because it's, uh, you know, it's run by a, a prince. You know, they have the king. Oh, queen. that's right. It's a dictatorship. I forgot. Yeah. Is, it an, is, it, is it like the, the, are they actually in charge or is yeah. it like the, yeah. the fake one in England? No, no. The, the prince of Monaco is in charge. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's his Don't country. Don't they have a soccer team too? They do. Oh, okay. A soccer oh. team. They have a basketball team. Okay, there'll be the Indy 500 yeah. on Sunday. And then the Coke 600, and then we'll have a, on Monday, we'll do something. Yeah. So, my prediction is, I'm going to go with, I'm just going to 
take a shot in the dark. It's going to be either Lando Norris or it's going to be Charles Leclerc. Because Charles Leclerc, every Monaco Grand Prix something happens to his car. Either they mess up the qualifying, either Ferrari messes up a pit stop. Something always happens, and I'd love to see him win his home race. Okay, uh, my prediction is Logan Sargent's going to win his first race. Okay, well, that's not happening. <laughs> he, will, he will probably crash the car in <laughs> practice or qualifying. Yeah, I think I think there's a better chance of your prediction than my prediction. But I'm, I'm not going to bet you a dollar on this one because no. I don't want to lose no, my no, money. No. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us for this episode, everybody. We're looking forward to watching qualifying of the Monaco Grand Prix because that is the most exciting part of that race. Okay. And keep on racing, everybody. Let's see if this works. We would be honored if you would join us. Really?